Jepson Prairie was sort of long recognized as an important ecological area and starting in the 70s there was a lot of conservation focus on this area and in, so in 1980 the Nature Conservancy purchased the Jepson Prairie Preserve. It's, it's 5, 1,566 acres, a, a nice chunk of vernal pool landscape that's preserved and so now it's actually managed by the Solano Land Trust. It's also recognized by the National Park Service as kind of a unique natural system that sort of represents the California vernal pool landscape. We've got some uh, aquatic organisms that we dipped, that I dipped out of Olcott Lake this morning. Olcott Lake happens to be a very, very large vernal pool. It's what we call a playa pool. Olcott Lake is almost a, uh, just under 100 acres. It's about 98 acres, so that's a big one but it functions just like any vernal pool. It's wet in the winter time, it's wet now, but in July, August, September, it'll be completely dry and down to the, the mud. That mud is really silty and it's very windy. This is very typical out here and that wind churns up the lake and we get this chocolate milk colored water. And you look at this and you think, wow, it's just muddy water, but it's teeming and just teeming with life. You'll notice as I pass around a scoop of the water, this is a larval form of a, a water, a predatory diving beetle, a ditistid beetle. And what you'll notice on this guy is this larva is actually fairly well developed. You'll notice on his, on his head, he has these enormous pincers. This is one of the primary uh, insect predators of the vernal pool. And uh, he will actually metamorphose into an aquatic beetle. We have a couple of, of really, really endangered species. The tadpole shrimp is one of them. It's because the vernal pool habitats are fairly rare habitats. Now this guy, as you were talking about, is pretty ancient. You know, there's a lot of fossils. This thing sort of looks like some of the fossil things, like you know, maybe a little bit like a trilobite, a little bit like a horseshoe crab. Its scientific name is Lepidurus packardi. It's in the group Brancopodia, which means lung foot. You'll look on the bottom and it's those it's got 11 pairs of little feathery legs, and that's, that's what it uses to swim around, that's how it breathes, and that's also how it captures food. Tolcott Lake will be completely dry in the summertime, so these crustaceans have developed, have evolved over time for these ephemeral pools that they live in. When they reproduce, when fairy shrimp reproduce, they'll actually produce a little embryo that will actually begin cell division and then go into a state of diapause. It'll basically stop a cell division and it develops a very hard outer coating cyst around that partially developed embryo. And then that cyst is then deposited into the water and it'll sink to the bottom and it'll just wait at the bottom of the pool until the rains come again and then start the life cycle all over again. The tiger salamander larva, you'll notice on the side of its head, it's got these feathery gills. So the salamander larva is entirely aquatic. It has to live in the water to breathe. It cannot breathe outside of the water. And the adult tiger salamanders migrate out of the pools and they live up here in the uplands. What they'll do is they'll find a nice gopher burrow or a little bowl hole. It's tied in with the adjacent, you know, it's all part of the bigger community that you have to have for, some, for many of these organisms, the adjacent grassland areas as well as the wetland areas.